Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman. As you can probably tell, we are out of the studio today. We are in Sacramento meeting with some of our elected officials. And today I'm very proud to be able to be here sitting with a man that I'm learning more about by the moment. This is Assemblyman Lackey. Thank you so much for allowing me to come in and sit with you here today. It's a privilege to be with you. We're going to talk about some issues that are Californians are facing. And mm-hmm. before we get into that, because that's all the heavy stuff, uh, we were just t- talking a little bit about, about you, frankly, and I would love to be able to have you share a little bit about that with, with everybody. Tell us, you, you had said you're from a small town and, and, you're, and about your dad, and just give me a little bit of, tell us about Tom. Okay, I'll give you the Reader's Digest version. I'm, uh, I'm from a very small part of Southern California. It was a little town called Boron, where uh, it's a borax mining town of about uh, 3,000 people. And uh, my dad was the town dentist there. And uh, upon graduating high school, I, uh, I went to college out of state and I studied uh, special education because I wanted to be a highway patrolman, but I knew my chances were very unlikely to get in. But I overcame the odds after teaching a year in, in special education and I retired from the highway patrol after 28 years. And uh, then I jumped into this uh, opportunity and I, I've been in the legislature now for 10 years. Uh, much to my amazement and the amazement of many others, uh, I'm in this this battle, and uh, it's a very rewarding battle at times. It's also very frustrating at other times, and the issue we're going to talk about today is one of those very frustrating issues. Good old insurance, right? The, the, That's the, correct. It's, it's right up there with car salesmen, attorneys, and insurance <laughs> people, I think, are somewhere in there. So I, I, I was talking with somebody earlier, and she is an attorney and an assemblywoman. And she said, so I have two of those that, she, that I have to I got you beat, politician. Oh, there you go, right? <laughs> you, you've got your, we're all in the same boat. Well, and, you know, hopefully what we can do is try and, and unwind a little bit of where okay. we're at. Because there's a lot of emotion that's going on right now. There's a lot of financial disaster that's going on along with the industry and it's affecting everybody literally everybody that's pretty real it's very real and what's also real is the level of misinformation so i want to hopefully we can touch on a little bit of that as well okay. um, but i have to ask you because it's it's interesting for me you were with the highway patrol so you 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 dealt with your share of bad driving i have what do you think currently about two issues i'm going to ask you and i know we didn't we weren't we weren't talking about this but i know you'll be able to help me with this Two issues that we're dealing with as far as driving behavior. Mm -hmm. One is, of course, good old-fashioned distracted driving. It's people on their cell phones. How prevalent a problem and how do you see that as being impacting on how safe people are driving right now? No, I think it's a huge problem. And I think it's a huge challenge because we all create habits, right? And these uh, smartphones, as we call them, uh, are a big part of our lives. And some people, it's even more than... Than some, but uh, I, I would say that all of us, to some degree, have a, a degree of comfort in uh, referring to our our smartphones. And I, I would say that the majority, a significant majority of the people, do not abandon that th- those habits when they get behind the wheel of a car. And that really, truly does enhance the danger substantially. And so, to what degree, I don't know how accurate some of the studies are, but all you have to do is uh, do your own study when you're driving. Look around. Look around and see what other drivers... I will say that uh, a high percentage of of the drivers are paying attention, more attention to their devices than they are the road. And that's extremely dangerous to all of us because I I worked in the highway patrol. uh, I, I started in 1985 and these smartphones really didn't emerge really strongly till about 2000. And they've done nothing but gain more and more momentum. So we had problems before then. And they've done nothing but uh, become enhanced because good driving requires attention. It's scary when you realize how much time it actually takes if you do the math. And, of course, in the industry, like I am, I've, I've done the math and I've, I've heard Seconds. the studies. The time it takes you to look down for your eyes to focus, to look at something, even if it's just checking the time. Mm-hmm. But that time to look down, focus, look up, and refocus Depending on where you are, if you're on the freeway, you're, you're driving the distance almost of a football field in that mm-hmm. blink of an eye, almost literally. 
And I think when we stop and we realize that, it should ha- it should change our behavior, but it doesn't. So I, I'm I'm hoping that at some at some point we'll reach a tipping point where people will realize that. So that's the first thing I had to ask you. The second is there is a movement now where the automobile manufacturers are talking about going away from the flat screens and going back to actual knobs and dials because you don't have to look at them. You can reach over and you can adjust something without having to stare, without having to find this and scroll mm-hmm. this and mm-hmm. pinch that. What do you, if you see legislation like that coming your way, what is, how does that make you feel? What do you think about that idea? Anything that enhances safety, I support. Um, but I have to be not sold a bill of goods, right? And Because I've, I've been around and, and I know a lot about driving probably more than most because I've spent so much time observing people's behavior. But uh, anything that makes driving safer, I will clearly support. Um, because we're in a very dangerous set of circumstances. We not only have these impairing devices, but we have substances that also enter into the very uh, public arena of debate. For sure. And, and, and it's, again, somehow become political. How, how that is, I don't understand how... We make everything political anymore. <laughs> I think you're you right. tell me what's exempt. I think you're right. I think you're right. All right. So, autos. We'll leave the auto. We'll leave the cars aside. Okay. And, you know, the elephant in the room, of course, is property insurance, and mm-hmm. it's the lack of carriers that are writing the carriers that have the rates that they have that are, are currently there. Tell me about what you're hearing from your constituents, from people that are contacting you. What are you hearing from people? In affordability. In affordability. Right. And, and managing costs. And uh, what I'm, that's what I'm hearing from the people. And it's, uh, I don't have good comforting news to share with them because it seems like um, the cost of insurance and, and to be successful in the insurance industry because of the catastrophic circumstances we've experienced as a state, that we have uh, agencies who make a profession out of this thing, uh, finding it very, very difficult to stay in business here. It's, it's definitely one of those, it's not a simple problem that's not going to have a simple solution. I want to talk about a little bit about what it is that is being proposed that's supposed to help the situation. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the sustainable insurance strategy that people have probably heard about, and also about the trailer bill that, I was going to say the man upstairs. I'm not talking about that man. I'm talking about the guy on the ninth floor that mm-hmm. the governor is talking about <laughs> <laughs> pushing to be able to try and expedite some of the parts of the sustainable insurance strategy. We'll talk about that as soon as we come back. Okay. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And don't forget, click here to watch the next video.